Humanity lives in suffering as a result of ideological conflicts, cruel wars, and sterile ethics. We suffer the anguish of inferiority complexes, moral sterility, and a spiritual void. These sound like New Age thoughts, but are the basis for a characteristically Vietnamese religion. Connection between heaven and earth has always been vital to the Vietnamese. Legend says when Vietnam was threatened by foreigners, the gods sent dragons to defend it. A formidable barrier was created when the jewels the dragons spat out turned into these islands in Halong Bay. The mythical beasts enjoyed the people's reverence and stayed. More than 70% of Vietnamese are Buddhists, and they make regular offerings to the many elaborate pagodas. They've adopted their own form called Tam Jiao, or Triple Religion. It's a mixture of Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism, fused with popular beliefs such as ancestor worship. Here, in the Jade Emperor's Pagoda, blessings are requested from Buddhist and Chinese deities by the old and young alike. Christianity, too, has a stronghold. Introduced 400 years ago by European missionaries, Catholicism was initially well received, but later suppressed and its followers were persecuted. When several missionaries were killed in the mid-1800s, the French colonized Vietnam, and the church was given preferential treatment. Today, 12% of Vietnamese are Catholics. But there's a little known Vietnamese religion, traditional in character while universal in outlook. Cao Daiism. Cao means high and Dai palace. Cao Dai is the figurative word for God, symbolized by an eye, the image of both universal and individual consciousness. Imbued with symbolism, Cao Daiism encompasses many elements, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Tao philosophy, and Confucian thought, as well as Vietnamese animism and ancestor worship. People have come to know each other better but do not live in harmony because of the multiplicity of those religions. That's why I have deigned to unite all of those religions into one, to bring them back to primordial unity. These are the words of the mystic Ngo Min Chu, heard in 1925 when he was dabbling in spiritualism. During seances, Chu received messages from the spirit world that had profound and significant meanings. He realized that he may be listening to the word of God, Shortly after, the Divine Spirit revealed itself as Cao Dai and began communicating its teachings and doctrine of truth. When we had the seance, we first used a pointer, and when the Spirit spoke, the pointer moved onto the alphabet, transmitting messages. Later, we used a coconut ladle with a pen on the other end, which was quicker. By these means, we came to understand the wish of the Emperor of Heaven and we were able then to follow the plan of God, the Emperor of Heaven. Previously, God's words had been transmitted through human intermediaries, such as Confucius, Moses, Buddha, and Christ. But because of the frailty of humans and their attachment to nation and race, God's message had become tainted. By speaking directly, God's meaning of the ultimate truth could not be altered. The spirits through which Cao Dai has communicated are both Oriental and European. Victor Hugo is the chief spirit of foreign missionary work. Trang Trinh, Vietnam's first poet laureate, and Sun Yat-sen, leader of the Chinese Revolution, are the other two Cao Daiist saints. They offer spiritual guidance in spreading the holy doctrine, God and humanity, and love and justice. The Kaudaiist priests come to the main temple to pray four times a day. Kaudaiists believe in one God, the existence of the soul, and duty to all of humanity. Separation from honors, riches, and luxury is promoted. Prayer is the most important Kaudaiist worship. It's an act of faith that elevates the heart, lifting one's soul towards God, with whom one can communicate directly. The daily services mix elements from the world's traditional religions. Kaudaists believe all religions are different forms of the same truth. They're symbolized in the colors of the high priest's robes, 
red for authority and Confucius, blue for peace and Tao thought, and yellow for virtue and Buddhism. Offerings are made to the altar of the divine eye. Following the Buddhist concept of the good person, incense represents purity, meditation, wisdom, and liberation from karma. To attain this ideal, the clergy have five prohibitions. Do not kill any living beings, do not steal, do not lie, do not practice high living, and do not attract bad karma. Caudaists must be honest, respectful, and modest. The simplicity of Caudaism and its unification principles were attractive to the Vietnamese, who at that time were still under French colonial rule. Within the first year of Caudaism being officially declared in 1926, there were over 26,000 followers. Its popularity based on a Western ideal. <laughs> The freedom of choice of religion. In Vietnamese traditional religion, we had ancestor worship and Buddhism because of the heavy influence from Chinese traditional religions. But when the founder of Caudaism received the Caudai religion, the people could have freedom of choice. So if they wished, they could follow this new religion. By the 1950s, one in eight South Vietnamese had chosen Caudaism. With this expansion came the building of the Great Temple and the creation of the Holy See in Tay Ninh province, home to a hundred thousand followers. But their influence spread further and their power was not only spiritual. They played a significant political and military role in South Vietnam for 30 years. Supported by the Japanese and later the French, they formed a protective force of two and a half thousand people, which was incorporated into the South Vietnamese army during the Vietnam War. Then came communism. The communist north took over the south in 1975 and made its victory felt at every level of the country's social and political life. Reunification was accompanied by large-scale repression and the Caudaists feared the worst because they refused to support the Viet Cong during the war and suppressed they were. These are the main gates to the Holy See. The dragons are a symbol of the emperor of heaven and representative of the religion as a whole. Since the communist takeover, these gates have remained locked and will do so until all repression has stopped. After reunification, Kaudai land was confiscated and the priests were detained under horrendous conditions. In 1979, four members were executed. The communists banned the seance and thus Kaudaiist access to God. The Hanoi government later returned the Holy See and 400 temples to Kaudai control, but it still maintains a strong grip. The clergy is not permitted to speak freely, but this priest allowed follower Hai Tring to speak for her. He explains how Kaudaiists had to reassess their religion in the wake of the communist repression. Every five years we have an election. Priests are promoted according to their good deeds, and if they have enough standing, they are awarded a higher rank. In former times, we had seances, and it was a choice of God from heaven. But now the hierarchy is elected by humanity. The religion has again flourished, and today there are two million Vietnamese adherents. After death, the body is always buried, and the soul reincarnated. In elaborate funerals, as many Kaudai brethren as possible are gathered to pray. Through the combined force of prayer, the spirit of the dead is lifted towards heaven, which it cannot reach by its own efforts. In this way, the soul can be resurrected, and death becomes a deliverance. Kaudaiism teaches that all humans come from the same source, and all religions are one says we should all live in harmony and strive to find a solution to suffering, a message for us all.